good morning guys uh, welcome to our first class on pistons today we are going to design a piston using the given data or uh, given inputs we are going to design a piston so here you can see the cross sectional view of a piston so here you can find the different terms so we are going to find out the different terms that are uh, mentioned in the figure we are using the in we are going to use the given inputs and we are going to solve that uh, piston design okay let's go in deep into the problem for uh, calculating the design procedure we are going to use the data that is in page number 15.6 you can find that data that is relevant to piston okay for calculating the design procedure we are going to use the um, data that is present in the page number 15.6 from 15.6 to 15.9 so uh, we start our uh, uh, design procedure fr from from uh, thickness of piston head to um, length of the piston pin okay so thick, we will start the piston uh, thick, uh, piston head thickness and we will end the design procedure with the piston pin okay and so let us start our problem uh, so this is the first problem that we are going to uh, solve here so he has given us uh, the given data that is design a cast iron piston for a single acting four stroke ic engine for the following specifications so he has given us uh, the cylinder bore diameter is 100 mm stroke length is 120 megapascals and brake mean effective pressure as 0.7 megapascals and fuel consumption he has given as 0.24 kg per kilowatt per hour and the speed he has given us 220 uh, 2200 rpm and the maximum gas pressure that is 6 megapascals okay just note down the given data and uh, keep the cal calcy with you okay in order to calculate uh, um, every term that is mentioned in the um, design procedure of a piston we have to use the different formulas for that you need uh, calcy that's why keep the calci ready as well as note down the whatever the given data that uh, that is projected in the um, screen okay just note down the given data here the given data starts with the diameter length maximum gas pressure the maximum gas pressure is converted as i mean is termed as 6 megapascal which is 6 newton per mm square later we are uh, just keep your calci ready so later we are going to so whatever are the what are the other data sandy so break mean effective pressure break mean effective pressure that is equal to 0 0.7 newton per mm square okay next the fuel consumption fuel consumption he has given as fuel consumption is termed uh, the term that we are used for that we are going to use for uh, fuel consumption is m okay fuel consumption m is equal to 0 0.24 kg per kilowatt per hour okay that we are going to convert in seconds don't worry we are going to use uh, we are going to convert in uh, letters okay just try to write the given data speed is equal to 2200 rpm okay so this is the given data now actual problem begins just note down the given data so first thing we are going to start is we are going to design the piston based on the piston head thickness so first we are going to start with piston head we are going to um, solve 
we are going to get the value of t1 okay the crown thickness that we are going to solve so the piston head thickness can be found out using the two formulas one is based on the strength criteria and the next one it is based on the thickness of piston based on the heat dissipation okay so these are the two formulas that are given to find out the thickness of uh, piston head so let us start our uh, problem so i think you have seen what is the formula for finding the thickness of piston head using strength criteria so okay thickness thickness of piston head based on the strength of the piston material so here the formula is t1 is equal to root over 3 into mean effective pressure into diameter by 16 uh, sigma tp so the sigma tp is nothing but allowable tensile stress of the piston material so here the allowable tensile stress of the piston material is uh, here he has given the material as cast iron in the given data itself he has mentioned as cast iron that's why we are going to use 30 to 40 newton per mm square that is uh, we are going to assume the values that is that is between 35 to 40 newton per mm square for uh, that is mentioned for cast iron okay the first uh, step is piston head t1 is equal to root over 3 mean effective pressure v square into sigma tp in mm okay so here we are having pm is equal to that is already mentioned as uh, maximum gas pressure sorry that i have uh, uttered as uh, mm, mean effective pressure not uh, its maximum gas uh, gas pressure okay maximum gas pressure that he has given uh, uh, the value is he has given as 6 6 newton per mm square and uh, d is diameter and uh, uh, sigma tp it, it is known as uh, allowable tensile stress allowable tensile stress okay so i am going to assume the value as 40 newton per mm square for cast iron okay so i am assuming this value assumed okay just uh, substitute those values 3 into 6 into what is the d value here in the equation that is uh, in the given data he has mentioned 16 into 40 okay so just uh, substitute those values and tell me the answer so i have got an answer of uh, 16.77 which is around uh, um, 17 or 18 18 mm okay okay next we have to calculate the piston head thickness that is uh, based on the heat dissipation okay see here thickness of piston head based on the heat dissipation here the formula he has given us uh, t1 is equal to 1000 h by 12.56 k tc minus te okay so what is meant by h here so h is nothing but heat flowing through the head in kilowatts okay so here he has mentioned as h is equal to 0 0.05 m into cv calorific value into brake power okay so h 
for calculating h also he has mentioned the formula actual formula is c into m into cv into brake power what is meant by the c value okay wait let me write it based on heat dissipation the thickness of piston head is given by T1 is equal to 1000 H by 12.56 K TC minus T. Okay. This is what he has mentioned in the data book. Okay. T1 is equal to 1000 H by 12.56 into K TC minus T. So here the terms H is nothing but heat flowing through the head through the head okay that will be in kilowatts okay so in the data book he has given the formula as 0.05 m into cv into brake power okay so this is the formula he has mentioned but the actual formula is c into m into cv into brake power this is the formula so what is meant by c here the c is nothing but constant usually we are going to take it as 0 0.05 so why what is meant by that constant so the constant is nothing but it is the portion of the heat supplied to the engine which is observed by the piston okay whatever some portion of the heat which is going to be absorbed by the piston that we are going to uh, consider it as a constant value because the uh, some value it is going to be um, some heat it is going to be absorbed that value is nothing but the constant value that is 0 0.05 and uh, m is nothing but that he that he has mentioned in the given data itself the fuel consumption that we are going to calculate m is nothing but the fuel consumption and cv is nothing but the higher calorific value and uh, pv is nothing but your brake uh, power okay for calculating the m value so as the m value he has given as 0.24 0.24 kg per kilowatt per hour am i right yes so we have to convert that value into 0.24 by 0.24 by 3600 that is kg per kilowatt per second okay right next what is the CV value? See here. So here you can find the CV value for diesel fuel as well as uh, CV value for petrol fuel. Uh, whether he has mentioned anything, design a cast iron for a single acting four stroke. Uh, so he didn't mention what is the uh, type of fuel. Just assume it has a diesel engine and uh, proceed further so the cv value is, is 4, 44 into 10 to the power of 3 kg kilojoule per kg for diesel okay this is assumed next we need to calculate the brake power so here he has mentioned brake power as pl 
ये एन बाई सिक्सटीन टू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ सिक्स किलो वाट्स एक्चुअली वाई ही हैज मैंशन द ब्रेक पावर वैल्यू इन द प्लेस ऑफ इंडिकेटेड पावर एक्चुअली ही हैज मिस इड समथिंग हियर दैट इज ब्रेक पावर इज इक्वल टू इंडिकेटेड पावर इन टू मैकेनिकल एफिशियंसी दैट ही हैज मिस इड द आई मीन इन द डाटा बुक ही हैज कैप्ट असाइड दैट्स वाई बी केयरफुल you have to uh, use brake power is equal to indicated power into mechanical efficiency okay ip into mechanical efficiency so me ip is equal to p into length of the stroke into area into n by 16 into 10 to the power of 6 into mechanical efficiency so the mechanical efficiency is assumed as 80% that's why i'm taking as 0.8 the mean effective pressure so the brake mean effective pressure in the question itself he has mentioned that is brake mean effective pressure as 0.7 megapascals okay so we are going to substitute those values and the length he has mentioned as length 120 mm that is length of the stroke and area for calculating area we are having pi by 4 d square formula and uh, as it is given as uh, single acting four stroke engine we are going to substitute as n by 2 the speed he has given as 2 2200 rpm just substitute the values brake mean effective pressure is 0.7 length of the stroke is 120 and for area pi by 4 Into hundred square into two thousand two hundred sixteen to ten to the power six into two. So just calculate the value and tell me the brake mean effective pressure. Ah, oh, sorry, brake power value. So we have got an answer of uh, nine point. Uh, Six eight okay, nine point six eight as brake power. Just substitute the uh, values in the formula. Okay, the formula is here. The formula here. The formula is T one is equal to thousand h by twelve point five six k into T C minus T E. So here we have calculated the h value and we have to calculate. K, I mean we have to know. K value as well as T C minus T E. Here T C is nothing but temperature at the center of the piston, and T E is nothing but temperature at the end of edges of the piston. The the temperature will change based on the material. So if the material is cast iron, it will be a different uh, temperatures. Whereas if it is an aluminium, forged aluminium or something, the mid Temperatures may be a different one. Okay, so that's we are going to take it from the data book itself. That is T C the two two twenty degrees centigrade for cast iron and uh, for aluminium it is seventy five degrees seventy uh, five degrees centigrade for aluminium alloys. What is the what is meant by K value here? The K is nothing but heat conductivity factor. the heat conductivity factor will be uh, different for different materials so here he has mentioned as 46.6 into 10 to the power of minus 3 kilowatt per meter per uh, degree centigrade that we are going to substitute just substitute the values uh, uh, Before uh, substituting those values, H is equal to we are having zero point zero five into what is the fuel consumption? Fuel consumption is zero point two four. Zero point two four by thirty six hundred into uh, CV. What is the CV value? He has mentioned as forty uh, four into ten to the power of three. Okay, ten to the power of three CV into brake power we have got as nine point six eight. Okay, so just uh, substitute the values and tell me the answer. 
so i have got an answer of uh, answer of uh, 1.41 kilowatts that i am going to substitute uh, um, in the given formula that is uh, t1 is equal to here uh, here uh, here you can find t1 is equal to 1000 into 1.41 by uh, what is the k value k value we are going to take it from the data book that is 46.6 into 10 to the power of 3 minus 3 46.6 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into what is the value of tc minus te that is 220 okay so just substitute the values and tell me the answer so i have got an answer of uh, 10.95 okay 950 mm okay this is the value that i have got uh, that is the thickness of piston head based on the heat dissipation whenever i was calculating i have to pause the video and i am doing the calculation just do the calculation be careful while uh, substituting the values okay so here the thickness of the piston head based on the heat dissipation is 10.50 whereas the piston head thickness based on the strength criteria is it is around 17 mm or that is 18 mm 17 or 18 uh, it's a round figure take it uh, around uh, uh, 18 mm and you can take the thickness of uh, heat piston head based on heat dissipation around uh, uh, 12 mm okay so actual values uh, are uh, maybe different but uh, just uh, go for a little bit higher values that is uh, 18 mm or uh, 12 mm that is a round figure one or else you can take the actual values also okay the question here arises is which value we have to consider while designing a piston whether the thickness based on the strength criteria or thickness based on the heat dissipation we have to take the value which is uh, which is having an higher value okay so here the uh, here the piston head thickness so here the piston head thickness uh, based on the strength criteria value will be around uh, 18 mm whereas the thickness of piston uh, value will be around 12 mm based on the heat dissipation so the higher value will be the strength based on the strength criteria the thickness of piston head we are going to consider that value okay so the t1 value will be 18 mm okay which is a higher value okay so next we are going to consider uh, we are going to calculate the thickness of rib thickness of rib okay so we are going to calculate the thickness of rib uh, so here the formula is T two is equal to just see here the thickness of rib T two is equal to zero point three to zero point five into T T one. Okay, so we are going to cal we are calculating the thickness of rib. Okay, T two is equal to zero point three. to 0.5 into t1 so i am taking as 0.5 t1 just tell me the answer 0.5 into 18 mm that will be 9 mm 9 mm so the thickness of a rib is taken so how many ribs we have to take so i already told you to make the piston rigid and to present distortion due to the gas load and the connecting rod thrust four to six ribs 
are to be provided in the inner side of the piston so while you are uh, designing a piston you need to take at least four to six ribs uh, in order to withstand the distortion that is caused due to the gas load as well as uh, connecting rod thrust okay that's why i am considering uh, number of ribs is equal to four okay this is this this is the value that i am going to consider next we have to calculate the um, piston uh, rings radial thickness of piston as well as uh, axial thickness of piston okay so here the radial thickness of piston rings is equal to t3 is equal to d into root over root over 3 into pc by sigma bearing pressure so here we have to design the radial thickness of piston rings that is t3 is equal to d into root over 3 into pc by sigma br okay so here the pc is nothing but the contact pressure that is uh, wall pressure of uh, cylinder uh, we have we have to assume that value and as well as uh, sigma br is nothing but uh, allowable bending stress of the ring material here you can find the here you can find the uh, allowable uh, be, uh, bending stress of the ring material that is 84 to 112 newton per mm square for cast iron he has mentioned already one thing we have to assume that value is contact pressure so the contact pressure value may be around 0.035 newton per mm square okay so that is an assumed value we we don't have uh, any special criteria for that that value is taken from the previous data so that's why i am assuming the contact pressure value as 0.035 just remember this value while you are solving the problems the contact pressure uh, inside the wall that is wall pressure will be around 0.035 newton per mm square just substitute those values and uh, tell me the answer so the formula for uh, radial thickness radial thickness of piston rings t3 is equal to d into root over 3 into pc by sigma br so here the pc will be contact pressure that we have assumed that is 0 0.035 okay so just a d value we have already there that is 100 into 3 into 0 0.035 by sigma br value that we have uh, in the data book itself 84 to 112 112 newton per mm square that's why i'm assuming the value uh, around 100 just substitute the values and tell me the answer here the radial thickness will be in mm so i have got an answer of uh, 3.24 3.24 around uh, 3.5 m okay this is the value that i have got next we have to calculate the axial thickness uh, of the axial thickness of the ring for calculating the axial thickness uh, we have a formula t4 is equal to 0 0.721 into t3 okay so here the t3 is nothing but your uh, uh, radial thickness of piston uh, piston rings that we are going to substitute here t4 is equal to 
जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टू वन इंटू टी थ्री ओके दिस इज द वैल्यू वी आर हैविंग सो आई एम टेकिंग अराउंड जीरो पॉइंट एट टी थ्री सो आई एम गेटिंग जीरो पॉइंट एट इंटू थ्री पॉइंट अराउंड आई हैव गॉट अराउंड थ्री एम एम ओके सो दिस इज द वैल्यू फॉर एक्सल थिकनेस ऑफ द रिंग दैट वी हैव गॉट नेक्स्ट यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट द एक्स सो लेट मी शो यू वन थिंग सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द रे वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एक्स वन दैट इज टी वन वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड ओके द थिकनेस ऑफ द पिस्टन हेड नेक्स्ट वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एक्स टू वैल्यू दैट इज द डेप्थ ऑफ लैंड सॉरी दिस इज द लैंड वैल्यू वन मिनट ओके सो वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एक्स वन वैल्यू एंड वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एक्स टू वैल्यू द एक्स टू वैल्यू इज नथिंग बट यूअर लैंड वैल्यू दट इज द एक्जल थिकनेस ऑफ द रिंग सो एक्जल थिकनेस ऑफ द रिंग करना जस्ट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ लेस मस्ट बी देयर बिकॉज इन ऑर्डर टू फिट द रिंग्स द पिस्टन वट एवर द लैंड वैल्यू इज मस्ट बी लेस दैन दट ओके सो रिंग्स फिट चेयरेंटे कट एवर द एक्जल थिकनेस दट वी हाव कंसीडर मस्ट बी greater than whatever the value here so that's why what is the axial thickness value and ekda uh, 3 mm so we we have to consider the x2 value must be uh, around the uh, 2.5 okay so in order to fit that uh, rings into this section okay into that section we have to reduce the value okay next we need to calculate the uh, radial depth of ring group radial depth of ring group the formula he has given as b is equal to t3 plus 0.4 mm okay C here B is equal to T3 plus 0.4 mm. He has given like this. The T3 value is around 3 mm. 3.5 we have considered plus 0.4 mm. Okay, we will be getting 3.9. Okay, this is the value that uh, value of radial depth of piston ring group. Okay. next we have to uh, calculate the sorry guys i didn't see uh, that the video has uh, cut down so just uh, i have continued further just uh, t5 is nothing but uh, uh, thickness of barrel near to the piston head that is the t5 so t5 value he has mentioned has T5 is equal to thickness of barrel near to the uh, piston head. So T5 is equal to 0.03 d plus b plus 4.5 mm. So just I am substituting those values and just tell me the answer. I have got around 11.4. Okay. So around 11.5. Okay. so this is the value that i have got next we need to calculate the thickness of barrel at the open end of the piston that is t6 the t6 value is 0.25 to 0.35 of t5 so the t5 value is 11.5 0.25 to 0.35 Five. I I have I am taking the zero point three five into T five. Uh, I have got an answer of uh, just uh, substitute the values and tell me the answer. I have got an answer of three point four five, which is around three point five mm. Okay. Actually, the time is very less. Just. Uh, 
continue further length of this cut next we need to calculate the length of this cut that is ls is equal to pi into mu into d into pm by ps so this is the formula that he has given in the data book length of this cut is equal to ls is equal to pi into mu into d into pm by 4 into ps the ps value is given as 0 0.28 newton per mm square for low speed engine and whereas uh, 0 0.5 newton per mm square for high speed engines and the new value he has given as 0 0.03 to 0 0.1 value so here he has mentioned the ps value as uh, uh, 0 point less than or equal to 0 0.5 newton per mm square for high speed engine as well as less than 0 0.28 newton per mm square for low speed engines so we uh, as the, in the given data he didn't mention as uh, what is the type of engine uh, let me check if he has mentioned anything so he didn't mention anything as a high speed or low speed that's why i am assuming the value as a high speed engine uh, just go for higher values so whenever uh, you are required to calculate anything um, 0 0.1 into 100 into the maximum gas pressure value that is 6 by ps value ps sorry it is, it is 4 ps 4 into the PS value is 0 0.4 just calculate the value you can get the length of this cut that is uh, around uh, 118 mm okay this is the value that I have got after calculating next we need to calculate the length of the ring section here the length of the ring section that is uh, LR is equal to I into T4 plus uh, I minus 1 into X2. This is the formula that we are having. Okay. Here I means uh, number of uh, rings he, here we are having. We are con we are going to consider the I is equal to 5 rings. And whereas the other I here it is called as the land sending. Okay so whatever the rings and the lands completely called as length of the ring section okay so here we are going to insert uh, five rings obviously five rings means we are going to have uh, four lands okay length length of ring section lr is equal to i into t4 plus i minus 1 into x2 so here i is equal to 5 rings okay so he completely will indicate the lands okay so that means uh, here so these are the rings okay so this portion this portion will be called in this portion will be called as are you able to see this portion will be called as lands okay so this these are the ring sections so we are going to calculate the length of, overall length of the ring section this section length of overall length we are going to calculate okay so that's why 5 into what is the T4 value here we have got T3 T3 T5 so T4 value is 3 mm that is 3 mm plus 5 minus 1 into x2 value so the x2 value is nothing but uh, 
uh, I already told you the ring section uh, thickness uh, that we are going to take it as uh, 2.5 because the axial thickness of the ring section is uh, axial thickness of the piston rings is around 3 mm we have to consider the uh, thickness of the rings little bit less than the uh, axial thickness of the rings so we have to consider a little bit of less value okay we have to consider this value as little bit less than the axial thickness of the ring section that's why so i have substituted as 2.5 here just tell me the answer the lr value in mm so tell me the answer so i will be getting around uh, around 2.5 mm okay sorry sorry it is 25 mm okay so lr value length of the ring section value will be uh, 25 mm next we need to calculate the length of the piston value so length of the piston value lp is equal to ls plus lr plus uh, uh, L, lt okay so the lt is nothing but x uh, lt is nothing but x1 here lt is equal to x1 is equal to t1 that is the thickness of the head okay so length of the piston is equal to length of the piston lp is equal to ls plus lr plus lt so ls length of the skirt value will be 118 118 plus lr value is 25 and here the thickness is 18 mm so just substitute the values and tell me the answer of length of the piston okay plus 25 plus 18 we'll be getting around 161 mm okay so this is the value of length of the piston later we have to calculate the diameter of the piston pin so the diameter of the piston pin d is equal to we are having a formula of uh, fz by pb into l here the fz is nothing but uh, so here the fz value is nothing but gas force so the gas force here uh, he has mentioned clearly fz is equal to uh, pi by 4 d square into maximum gas pressure okay so fz is equal to pi by 4 into d square into pm by pb into length okay this is the value we are having okay the fz value is uh, pi by 4 d square into pm okay pi by 4 d square is okay that is the gas force gas force pi by 4 d square okay you have already seen pi by 4 d square into pm by pb into sorry this is uh, d okay so pb so pb is nothing but allowable bearing gas bearing pressure of piston pin which will be around 15 to 30 newton per mm square okay just remember these two values one is the constant pressure uh, that is the wall pressure uh, in wall pressure and that is uh, 0 0.035 and whereas uh, uh, another value that you have to remember while calculating the piston is allowable bearing pressure of the piston pin so just calculate and just substitute the values you can get so here the l is nothing but the length of the uh, piston pin so a length of the piston pin not the length of the stroke that's why we are uh, using 1.5 d here so just substitute the values as pi by 4 d square into into 6 by pb value is uh, i am taking around uh, 25 uh, bearing pressure value which lies between 15 to 30 newton per uh, mm square so i am taking as 25 into 1.5 d 
okay this is the d value okay so just substitute the values and you can find the uh, exact d value okay so you can find the d value so just substitute those values like uh, pi by 4 d square into uh, 6 by 25 into 1.5 d so you can get the value of d uh, around uh, 36 mm okay this is the value that i have got next we need to calculate the induced bending stress of the piston pin so whatever the uh, bending stress so i think uh, the time is up just uh, see the formula here induced bending stress in the piston pin that is uh, sigma b is equal to 32 m by sigma d1 uh, whole cube okay so m can be founded by fz into d by 8 so you already know what is meant by fz pi by 4 d square into pm you have already calculated that okay just uh, use this this formula and find out the answer and you can uh, come you can conclude the problem here itself induced bearing stress that is 32 m by pi d1 cube so here you are going to get uh, 3 2 into 4 7 1 2 4 by pi into already d value we have got here 36 whole cube just tell me the answer that will be in sorry that will be in newton per mm square okay just tell the answers uh, from this you can conclude the uh, uh, problem okay so i will be getting around uh, sorry sorry here uh, i have substituted only the fz value so in order to get the m value we have to go for the formula fz by d fz into d by 8 so we will be getting a value of uh, 5 8 9 into 10 to the power of 3 newton mm okay newton mm this is the value that i have got here just substitute that values and you can find the answer okay so with this uh, we have concluded the um, problem so wait uh, i will tell the answer also i have got an answer of 129 newton per mm square with this we have concluded the piston problem okay so this is how we are going to calculate the uh, design procedure of a piston okay maybe it takes some time but it's a beautiful one okay just uh, try to solve all we have we are going to have every step by step procedure in the design data book just remember some changes that we have done in the data book while doing the problem okay